menu tonight is Domino's. <laughs> I've I've been saving my my appetite all day. No, I mean, honestly, the past two day. weeks, all Ryan has been talking about is pizza. Y'all, I haven't cheated one time. Yeah. I don't even know how long. What's going, going on, Murphy? Welcome back to our channel, guys. If you are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, turn on post notifications, and join the family. family. Yeah, you always be forgetting your ring. I swear, it's because I'm not wearing it. Since y'all putting this in a hot seat, get on our ass. Get on my ass. Get on that. You want me to get on that ass? No. Ooh, what is these? Cinnamon rock? Yep, cinnamon, cinnamon rocks. bread, knots, whatever. We got Parmesan bread, like bread bites. I got a pizza and I got a chicken alfredo. You didn't get the thick crust? This is what they have. This is their thick crust. You show our little Caesars. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you do that? Oh. Little Caesars. All right. You know what? I guess I'm going to see eating pizza with no cheese. I'll go ahead and talk since I do notice that, like, a lot of times it's mainly just me eating. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. <laughs> My turn. We do have a bunch of life updates we want to kind of tell you guys about. And then also... You guys are going to be putting us in the hot seat when we answering a lot of y'all's questions that we put out on our Instagrams. I think we need to kick it off and start this with the house. That was a huge question that you guys asked us was when, what's, where's the house update? When's the house going to be done? What's going on with the house? Some people are saying that we faked buying the house. Oh my gosh. Some people don't believe we bought a house. The house update not going to be in this video and set in this video. It's going to be set in the next video. We're actually set up to go see the house for the first time time and apparently like they've obviously been sending us pictures and stuff mm -hmm. um as it's going up it's honestly a dream come true that we're able to be in this position to to build our first home at 25 just have that stability feeling in a home and yeah. that's one thing me and montana haven't felt in a really long time you know we've been apartment living for like four years now and Literally ever since we've we're just done with together. it we're just done with it we'll get into the apartment shit a little bit some other shit that happened but we're gonna give you guys a house update, major house update. We're gonna take you guys with us to see where the house is at because we haven't seen it in person yet. Apparently, like the last thing we seen that is that the walls are up. Yeah. That's the only thing we can say. Like the walls are up and the, the roof is on. I just feel like it's gonna feel so real. We're excited to see it. Yeah, but we're really, really, really excited. And it'll probably be the next video, so you guys will see when we see it. If y'all are excited, make sure you run the likes up. Make sure you have your post notifications on. Super excited to tell you guys more even about the house. Yeah. And like the whole house process and you know, getting the mortgage and like we're not renting no more, like we're buying it. And I feel like it's things that like you guys don't see like other people on social media don't say or like try and hide. Or some shit. We're not doing all that. We're going to tell y'all. The process. This is the process of buying a home. Mm. A building one too. That's the house update we can give right now. You guys are going to see the main house update next video. I guess we might as well just hit the apartment. Are we going to get it? Are we going to get it a little dark with it? I mean, there's no avoiding it at this point. Just there's no avoiding it anymore. Y'all already know that there's been some crazy stuff happen while we've been living in this complex. Things just have not necessarily gotten any better and when i tell y'all we just stay in our little apartment okay we don't leave we don't really associate so the day that ryan and i went to go get my lips dissolved that's like it was like a little bit over an hour away and we actually stayed in that area for like a little bit because of just like how i was swelling and whatever by the time we left that area, we ha we were stuck in so much traffic, it probably took us like two hours to get home. Five o'clock at this point. You have to like turn onto a street to get to like where we live. The actual complex building. Yeah, and that whole street to turn on is yellow taped off. And we're like, oh my gosh. We're like six like cop cars here. Six cop cars, literally 20 steps up, like right in the middle. Yeah. Then, you, then we see a line of cop cars, like 20 cop cars around the side. It These big like, ass cop vans. And we're like, what the, what is going and on? And it was like right in front of our building. Like, the thing is, is like, to be honest, y'all, like, we didn't even told y'all about like all the instances of like the, the massive fights that they be having downstairs where there's blood over the wall, over the floors. 
cops got to show up. We have the cops at our building probably every week. Once a week, the yeah. cops are here. So it's a normal, it's a normal thing. Like if you live in Miami, you kind of know. That's like normal shit that be happening at, at apartment buildings. You so some crazy stuff. We get on stuff. the elevator and there's like cops in the elevator and it's just like a normal day. And it's like, oh, okay. Hey, how's it going? Happy Monday. Like. And then on top of it, these old ass people in this building and these buildings, they be calling the cops for anything. Literally me and Montana saved a pit bull out front running out here. In the front, a woman from this building had two two of her kids. We we saved the pit bull. Like we I gra we, we grabbed the pit bull. It was a nice pit bull though, so we yeah. grabbed it because we weren't scared to like grab it. And this woman over here is like freaking out. She calls the cops, trying to get like, the dog to put like, up. You know what I'm saying? Like, get your like get your dog, you dumb bitch. Like da -da -da. I'm like the dog is literally doing nothing wrong, but like wanting to just like run free and like you could tell the dog just had his like five seconds of yeah, I'm gonna bro. run and do it. Like, obviously, the woman free. didn't want the dog to accidentally get off leash, but that's why there were multiple people helping trying and to get dog the dog. was not, dog had no intention of, no. of was any type of harm. No, wasn't even her kids either. Yeah, and she was, like, screaming and call, she had the cops on the phone. I was, like, I was yelling at her ass. I was, like, I was pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we going to, yeah, yeah, go ahead. We pull up, and there's multiple people that we recognize that live at our building and so we kind of pull up in this like side parking lot because they're literally blocking off like any type of entrance that you can get even remotely close to our building but they were saying that there was a threat and that they didn't know like how long or how it started or anything but all we could see and hear about is that nobody could go in and nobody could go out. We couldn't like get inside and I started kind of like freaking out because the dogs were in the apartment. And that was like the first thing that I could think about was like, I didn't care about anything, but I just like, we needed to get an update because you know, the dogs were in here. We're like in this side parking lot for like a little bit, just kind of like watching one after the other, just like cops pouring into this yeah there was so many cops there was so, like probably every single cop in this area was probably here they had the squad out they had the little robot detecting the like the device that they found and they had canine and they had canine units sniffing out the whole building the whole area it ended up being that there's a bot green box out front so it wasn't in the building so that's why they kept the people in the building and then they kept people away from it because, like, if it went off, we were actually, like, really close to it being outside of the building. Yeah. Like, and they kept, like, they, over the time, they kept pushing people back, like, as they went to go do stuff with it, mm -hmm. to go and test it. Yeah. They pushed people back just in case something happened. So, we were actually only, like, I would say, like, maybe, like, 30 yards from it. We weren't in no building or nothing. We had no idea, though, that it was right there on the street. We thought it was something in the building. It ended up being, like, a device that was left there that wasn't that wasn't supposed to be there, but they didn't specify exactly because I didn't think they want no problems after from residents, but like pretty much that's what it was. And it was like this big commotion. You know, I, I get bad neighbor here, bad neighbor there, Karen here, Karen there. The shit that we've seen in this building now and the stuff that we've dealt with, I have never in my life heard of such things. I'm sitting on TikTok and I hear about all these stories about how dark of a place Miami is. And I've even seen some of you guys comment being like, yeah, I was born and raised in Miami. And like, you know, you just keep it pushing. Like you really just like, you know it and you feel it. And you just kind of like, it, it's just like the energy here and you just deal with it. What else is happening in this building? I know, I feel like we're missing something. We're missing a ton of shit. Oh! Oh, yeah, the fucking ghost shit. I hate bringing the ghost shit up, bro. Especially it's coming up in September and fall. Yo, I really don't, I don't, I do not mess with that paranormal ghost shit, okay? I don't mess with it. It's hard for me to even talk about it because I get so, like, twisted in my head about it. And it's like, I just start thinking super deep about it as if something is staring at me right now, right here. Right. And it's in my, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Sometimes right. I have to be like, what? What? You know what I'm saying? Then I call Q to come and say, "What good boy? Uh, good boy. That's my boy. See, he, he Keo disturbs it. Keo disturbs whoever's staring at me. Good boy. Yeah. That's why I got two drummer sabers. <laughs> they gonna detect that they hear something. Just literally, just the other day, we're getting a little dark here because we're talking about the apartment. Just the other day, Callie was in our bedroom. She starts. 
barking, but it's a bark like you know their hairs are standing up, like they're spooked. They see something, they're in attack mode. Hallie is super defensive now. Yeah. She's like, she, she's, she's got aware. your- Yeah, she's super aware of everything. I look at Montana in a way of like, yo, she's barking at something. I go and I step quietly because I wanted to see what she was barking at. And I look, peek in, and she's barking at the corner of the room. You know. And she didn't stop until I got in there, like fully in there. She, she kept doing it even like, she knew, she sensed me, but like her hairs were standing up. She was just like super spooked, like frozen and barking. That scared the shit out of me. That was just the other day. Take it back like a month ago. I was sitting right here on, in, at the dining table. Montana was sitting behind me and we were watching TV because we were eating. Well, I have the chills across the whole leg. My hairs are standing up. So I'm sitting like this and Montana's sitting behind me. Don't. Bro, I'm getting crazy. chills, bro. Fuck, I'm getting chills. No, what are, you, what are you touching me for? I gotta demonstrate it. No. Just let me, just, let me demonstrate it. Just turn. Just like that. Yeah, right there. Montana, I can't see Montana. She's like this way to me. But I'm gonna act like this. She's this way. And I feel right here, three taps. And it felt like taps. Like a human touched me, a human encounter physically, tapped me with their finger like that, it was like this. Stop. As if she was trying to get my attention. Cause normally she'd be doing some shit like that and then she'd be looking at me with all her puffy eyes and, and she'd be looking all cute and shit cause I know she wanted like a hug or something. So I turned around with like a cute looking face, like as if like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, I turned around and I was like. Y'all, he literally went like this. Like, I just got fucking chills. Don't do that, bro. I hope y'all aren't watching this with the lights out. No, Something's but, behind you. Stop. <laughs> no, but when I tell you, like, I'm sitting there, chip. What? What? What the f are you doing? What? Tell me if you didn't just see that. See what? What the f are you looking like that for? Stop. Stop, bro. I'm fucking no, scared. what the f are you. I'm getting scared, bro. What the fuck are you looking bro, at? Bro, I swear I saw something fly up, bro. Right in between us. I'm not even capping, bro. My eyes are water. You don't know I wouldn't be capping. Look at my eyes, bro. On everything. I'm fucking freaked out right now. Why the fuck would... Bro, I swear. It was like a little freaking... Bro, tell me the camera got that shit, bro. It literally looked like a hair going like this. Bro, that was freaky, bro. I just think we're freaking ourselves out right now. I'm gonna keep telling myself that. Because, like... I'm bro. Freak the fuck out. No, I'm dead fine. I'm going down there tomorrow and I'm getting out of this fucking lease. No, I'm not even playing anymore. They I swear, right in the middle of us looked like a hand no, that went not like this. Not a hand, it didn't look like a fucking hand. It looked like a, like a just like a, a smoke, like this. <laughs> I got chills across my whole damn legs. So, we want to leave our apartment early. That's the big news. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. <laughs> yeah, we need to stop talking about the, the that shit because we honestly get too spooked for it. We'll have to save those for really deep stories to like <laughs> when we actually are not in this apartment no more. No, 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 no. We'll have like a last hurrah right before we leave here because this will never be discussed in our house. Yeah, facts. <laughs> we did get out of our lease early. We'd have to stay in like a Airbnb or something until then. So we don't know if that's to come, but don't hold that to us. With all that being said, and the house being built and stuff like that. You know, we really like locked in this summer. You guys probably saw like we really didn't do much because we wanted to set ourselves to like lock the fuck in mentally. Don't spend no money on on extra shit that is not needed. Everything we need is what we need to buy, not a want. And that's what we really tried to hold ourselves to. And like we hard. did want to go on trips and we did you know, want to do things for each other or whatever the case was, but which we're still in right now, those six month, eight month time periods of, you know, cut back, dial in, just lock the fuck in mentally. So with that, I had decided to sell my car and I got rid of the Corvette. I don't have it no more. I still have the little, little car they gave me for it. The replica. That, the real replica they gave me, that's my memory of it. But I had my phone with it for like a year and a half and obviously like, it was a great gift, beautiful wife, 
bought me. I felt bad at the same time giving it up, but like at the same time, I was like, look, this is what we got to do because price on it started decreasing a lot and I was just like, you know, you, you bought it outright and it's like, I don't want to go completely under on what you put on this car just because it's a car. And you to know, me, I feel like that was like very mature. It's just grown people shit. You buy yeah. a car for a hundred thousand and it drops all the way to sixty thousand value. It's like, yo, yeah. you just lost forty grand. I ended up getting more for it because I sold it at the right time. But like, we decided to get rid of my car, so we sold that. I feel like we had it during the best time. Yeah, yeah, we and definitely had it during the best time. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, I was happy that he got to like experience that. It was just a smart decision all around to just let it go. I had my fun with it. Appreciate my wife buying me it and you know making that special for like the year and a half that I had it, but. Things come to an end. You change and your views on things change and I feel like I'm a way different person than even what I was last year. I would definitely say if this could be a learning lesson for anybody, I would definitely say last year I was more, even more of a person that was like materialistic. Like I got the money for it, so I'm gonna go get it. You know what I'm saying? Like that was me last year. Like this year is like investments. Same investments. Like it's like I'm 25 years old now. It's like I don't want to be 25 years old with no investments, not even a house, driving a Corvette, still sitting at the clubs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I want to be, I want to be in a fucking house with investments, with fucking money coming in on my backbone, and I'll go drive the nice cars. You know what I'm saying? My priorities just changed. This has to do with a, it's adulting. You just, you know, you gotta adult in the right ways. You can't adult backwards. Yeah, and plus, like, I just feel like we're getting to that age where it's like we did the club thing and the partying thing when we were young, but like, it's it really is time to like grow up. We're just putting our priorities where they're supposed to be. Putting the priorities first. Obviously that stuff can come, but once the priorities are done, that's how it works. Yeah. You can't have no, no slacking. Moving on to a topic that's not even related to anything that we talked about, but I saw it was important to kind of like share it with you guys. Cause I know that we've shared this topic very, very closely with you guys. As you guys saw, I got my first period last month and it was crazy. Yeah, I was just like really happy. Massive milestone. Yeah. Like that was like, I know y'all were, we were so in the moment, but to look back on it and to like overlook it, between two and three years of like the struggle of having that tumor and dealing with whole aftermath of getting off your birth control and like, yep. So it was like, to, it all came to an end. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling that it was gonna probably be very rare if like my period just all of a sudden started to be regular. Supposed to start my second period August 14th or something like that. And obviously I still haven't gotten it. And so I'm like nine, 10 days late on my period. If my period was completely regular in a perfect world, I had a feeling that it just like wasn't gonna be that easy. I am like nine, 10 days late. I obviously was hoping for the best. You know, I was hoping that I was gonna get my period somewhat on time, like maybe give it a few days, whatever. But since I started tracking it and I have like the Flow app and it started to say like one day late, two days late, three days late, right? Like what obviously do you think about if you're late on your period? I'm just gonna be fully transparent. Like Ryan and I, we're not like careful. Like we don't feel like we even need to be. Like it, it, like it wouldn't be a crazy thing if like I did end up pregnant. So I really, swore up and down that I thought I was pregnant. I saw like three days late and there was a few nights in a row that I was like losing sleep at night because I was really, really nauseous. For me, that's weird. Like I never really get nauseous. Like I'll have like bloating or like my stomach will hurt or whatever, but I don't ever feel nauseous. So like this feeling for me was different. And obviously you were late nausea and my period's late so i swore up and down that i thought i was pregnant for like six days i was like getting ready every single day like thinking about oh my god how am i going to take a test runner together all the time and i was taking videos of myself for like multiple days because i really like thought that i was gonna like be pregnant. Like I finally had a time where I was like able to, you know, go off and like 
take a pregnancy test and obviously I'm not or I wouldn't be like talking about this right now. It's just like really sensitive. I know you guys like know that it is and and like it's still fresh. Like this is only like a couple of days ago. Um, but I, I don't think I like realized how bad like I wanted to be pregnant until you know I wasn't but I feel like I myself up because like for multiple days in a row like I swore up and down that I thought that I was not only was I thinking that I was I was constantly like almost like every second of like every day that I was like trying to find a time to take a pregnancy test all I could think about was how I was gonna tell Ryan like it was almost like I was already telling myself that I was pregnant and I was like trying to figure out how I was gonna tell him and I think that that's like what really like messed me up and got like my hopes up and I definitely know that I shouldn't have did that because I just got my first period and I, I honestly I was hoping for a miracle but like you know I can't put that much pressure on myself and like my body and like I've been, we've been through so much and my body's been through so much and I couldn't have expected that but it was just like, it was, it's, it was just hard and it is kind of hard but I don't want to talk about it too much because it is like, I think it is getting like a little bit more like sensitive to talk about. I don't want to sit here and talk about it too much. That's just like a little bit of an update because I feel like you guys were kind of wondering about my period but also you guys thought that I was maybe like dropping hints or anything like that but no like I'm not as we always say and I know the love and encouraging words that you guys share with us is that it'll happen in God's plan and that's all I continue to do is like talk to him and pray to him and just trust trust our story and that's all that you know it's all that I can do she's strong for even telling me you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wasn't gonna like tell him because <laughs> it's sad for the both of us, but I just want to tell to anybody that does have kids right now that I'm sure being a parent is the hardest job in the world and I don't doubt that for a second, but I just want everybody to know how much of a blessing it is to, if you were blessed with a child already in your life that like you're very lucky and you know there's people out there that it's a lot harder for them or that it's just like some people just really want it and it's just not their time yet but I just want you guys to like look at look at it as a blessing because you know there's been a million situations that I feel like I've been around that people maybe have not talked that highly like or just like been in public and just have heard you know parents like be so hard on their kids or like just make their kids feel like they're like in a nuisance in their life and like like having a child is like the greatest blessing in the whole world and you know some people would like die to be in your position so you guys didn't expect to be scared cry and maybe be even be angry in one video did hey you? but this is life okay we give you guys <laughs> all all of it that's facts now let me check the score oh my gosh god guys he's literally into these beds he won't stop I love you so much, people, buddy. Oh. I think this is the realest, rawest life update. I swear. Y'all are basically putting us in the hot seat now because y'all had some crazy questions. And I really love this one. I really do. How have you managed to remain a strong relationship while your relationship being public all these years? I love this. Okay. Communication. Boundaries and honesty and putting each other first. Now, always making sure that him and I are good before anything in our life has always kept us strong. Because at the end of the day, if we're fighting, arguing, anything is like not connected, then nothing else in our life will work. That's just like one thing, but communication and honesty and boundaries all kind of like tie in all together is that we've never lost sight of each other's boundaries and from the very beginning of our relationship nothing has changed from the first week that we started dating to now 
is we've always said what we don't want in a relationship and what is important to the both of us and we've always stuck to that. The way that I want to be treated is the way that I'm going to treat him. I just want us to always be like connected on that level because I feel like that's what kept us like really really strong is just like the communication and like always keeping our boundaries like in the forefront. The fundamentals of our relationship of like when we first started, we'll never forget. And that right. goes back to like the little things. I do like that too, just kind of like going off of that is that we're married now. But the one thing that we've never lost sight of is to like always be dating each other. Because even like still to this day, like he'll stay, say things to me and they'll genuinely make me feel like it was like the first compliment that he's like ever given me. Like I still get those. Like, I feel like that kind of goes down with like you know how they say like don't settle. Yeah. I feel like that could be within a relationship too. Like mm -hmm. don't settle for somebody to become complacent. Like as if your relationship is from the fundamentals of when you first started dating. Which yeah. when you first started dating, it's always you know that cupcake kind of phase. Yeah. That's kind of like what we try and like keep giving each other and keep showing each other how much we love each other and are happy to have each other in our lives okay so they kind of asked about like friends <laughs> they asked about That's why we don't oh really too, yeah. why we don't have or why we don't like like why we don't have a lot of friends yeah in the space in the influencer world the question was super more detailed too like who is faking shit who's faking shit I'm going to be honest, me and Montana like staying to ourselves. We've always been like that. Even when we first started dating and we weren't doing social media. On a platform talk, the reason me and Montana really don't fuck with influencers like in the space as much is like, I'm going to be honest, I, maybe it's because we're too picky, but like we just are genuine people ourselves and we expect the same thing back. And all we see is these high heads, these egotistical, you got, a lot of the haters think I have an ego. You should see what the fuck actually some of these influencers be talking about and be, be Behind doing, the scenes. Yeah, be doing to their own audience that comes up to them and wants to meet them and shit like that. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, that's who made you. Like, that's why you're even here today. Like, why they're even coming up to you. How they just treat people is, and how they treat us, in a sense, we just haven't messed with and we, we like respect, right? Coming from us, we would drop you in a f second. Obviously, look at our f parents. At this point in our age and, and life and everything we've dealt with, we really don't have time and energy. We're, we're gonna go out of our way for you. You know, we're gonna, you ask, 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 ask for all this stuff from us, and then we deliver, but then we don't even ask nothing from you because we don't ever ask anything from anybody. Um, anything. Like, y'all literally. If you go on our TikTok lives, we're actually giving money away, not begging for it. Right. Like some people do. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we're always it's just different. constantly giving back to you guys. It's just mindset different. Yeah. Different mindsets. Different, diff just different things. And, and I feel like we're more, we see ourselves as very genuine people. And we just, we just vibe towards that. As and I feel like that's we, why we don't have a lot of influencer friends. Yeah. As soon as we see the energy switch and a lot of the energy not being reciprocated it becomes a red flag to us and honestly something that i'm gonna be honest yeah. that i kind of did like for a while was all right well i'm just not gonna reach out and you'll see who your friends yeah. are then especially you'll, especially and then, in you'll see, and then you'll see who reaches out wanting something from you that's all i'm saying is that sometimes you just gotta sit back and say you know, I want it as much as I give this relationship a chance and a chance and a chance. It's like, and you're trying to hold on to it. At the end of the day, when you constantly see certain signs, okay, well, let me try something to see if I'm right. And then when you're just like proven right, it's just like, no, we've gone giving. out of our way for so many people, and we don't ever look for anything in return. And it's not even that. We'll try and meet new people, and it's just like everybody in this space has an agenda. Yeah. They have an agenda to get something off of you, to take your energy, to take some type of like. I I don't I don't fucking know. I don't even look at myself like that. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a normal ass human being. The few people that we do have, 
like we're like why i don't know we just don't understand why it's not more of a thing to like just be genuine yeah and i'm gonna be honest i really actually think you'll notice um the people who post this is an insider for y'all the people who post with all these different people and shit uh doing that kind of stuff is like i'm just being honest one can't be friends with one when they're friends with all. You see what I'm saying by that? And it, that has not to do with the platform. That has to do with anybody even in your life. Or we have each other and we're so tight with each other mm -hmm. that we just really... And you'll, you guys will see, you guys see us, we're always to ourselves. And it's like the couples out there that are to themselves. It kind of like, you know, kind of shows. But I think we're going to go ahead and close this out right here. This was kind of a big up life update that we could give y'all. Yeah. And kind of just like let you guys into our life. We like doing these because we do want to update you guys because so much like does happen behind the scenes. But yeah. we're also excited about next video, which will be technically another big update. Yeah. But that would be really fun to finally see the house, show you guys, and just give you guys some insight of how this whole house stuff has been happening. What's y'all's favorite pizza spot? Mm. Like fast food chain wise. Comment down below and we'll see y'all next video. Mark Mark out. Peace.